What is going on my fellow Leaf Shinobis? My name is Kryptonic and today I'm going to be giving you guys a rundown of how to use Streamlabs OBS and just how to get around it because a lot of the times people want to start streaming, recording videos on their PC, their console with their capture card, things like that and the first thing they do is they mess it up by not having the right settings and having a low quality stream which ends up resulting in just people clicking on your stream and then clicking off of it within a few seconds because either they can't hear you properly or the video just looks like crap and they don't want to stick around and find out whether or not you actually know how to play the game properly or know how to use your computer properly. So today we're going to be running down all the settings and we're going to be going over every little setting so that way if you guys are new you guys know how to use OBS by the end of this video or at least have an understanding of it. So if you guys do end up enjoying the video make sure to drop a like on it but anyways guys let's get straight into the video. Also let me know down below if you guys are going to join me in the area 51 raid I'm expecting to see at least minimum half of you guys there. I'm already ready. I've already got my green suit in so you know I'm gonna camouflage with my friends if they get if they get me in there ooh, I'm already hidden so moving over to OBS OBS is a very interesting program so general is just a lot of like the basic things that you want to just do like for example a lot of the color issues if you want to make it white things like that they're all they can all be found here so that you can look on your own it's not really anything too complicated when it comes to stream there are different types of streaming services so some you know streaming platforms that aren't as big as twitch they might have a specific key and password that twitch doesn't even show because they're not that big it could be like mixer 20 years back a billion years back so then you would just have to put the custom url that the website gives you and of course the stream key so it's very easy but for the most part uh streamlabs obs does let you log into facebook twitch youtube and other stuff so you should be fine and like i said if you're using something that's out there then you just simply have to go to custom and select what you're doing so right here you can see youtube twitch smash cast a mixer facebook restream twitter all these different things so you have an option to go there and the server is basically where the computer is trying to connect you to so a lot of the times it'll auto recommend meaning that it'll connect you to whatever server is closest but you know sometimes it might not be the closest one like for me for sure la is the closest one because i'm only about an hour or two away compared to everything here on the list i'm extremely far away from everything else so that would just not be great for me overall and for stream key I don't personally need to put the stream key because I already logged in up here to the top right. So once you log in, it lets you just stream directly to your Twitch account so you won't even need to put your stream key down. So that's pretty great. And moving over to the output. So basically in the output, you could have it in two modes, simple and advanced. And the simple mode, it's great. Like I said, if you're just trying to get one thing done, it's really great. But I would highly recommend you guys challenge yourselves a little bit and get into that advanced mode. Getting into that advanced mode is like building your computer. You can see everything about it. And the simple mode is sort of like a pre-built. It works until something breaks and you don't know what broke exactly. So once you go into the advanced mode, it'll just show you everything that you need to know when it comes to streaming, recording, audio, everything. So basically for streaming, you can have different audio tracks. So this is if you have two different microphones going in, you have your desktop, all these different things. This will affect you down the line because if you record something, it's all going to come out and smash into just one audio track. So if you want to record, let's say your friend's voice, your voice and the game, but maybe the game is a little too loud, you won't be able to control that because it's all smashed into one audio clip. So if you lower the game volume in that one audio clip, you're also lowering your voice and your friend's voice, and then it, it just screws up your entire recording. Now, there are two different types of encoding processes so there is x264 which is your processor so that could be you know your intel processor and that's what you're going to be using your a and b processor whatever that's your processor and then you have nvec nvec is if you have an nvidia graphics card which is really really good nvec has been getting better and better over time and right now they have an nvec new which i will showcase right here so they have hardware nvec which is just like the what it used to be and a hardware nvec new which is if you have an rtx card or if you have a 1660 1660 ti you can actually use a new encoder that can be found in these graphics cards and it will look a lot better than just using you know the regular nvec because you're using you're taking advantage of this new encoder and it's just a really good encoder and i would highly recommend you guys try it out but now going down here to rate control so rate control is basically what it's going to try to do with your bit rate and if you put at cbr it's going to be constant bit rate so for the most part if you give it a 5000 bit rate which i will explain what it is it will try to fluctuate around that number so it won't go to like 3000 
or it won't go down to 2000 and it'll stay at that 5000 number. And that's what constant bitrate does compared to VBR which is variable bitrate which it's just going to go up down up down up down and that's not what you want at all so I would highly recommend constant bitrate because that's what keeps your quality together for the most part and in general that's what everyone in just likes to use because it's what works the best and now coming down to bitrate which is what I was talking about earlier bitrate is how much of your internet you're giving out to get the stream quality to look good so if you're using x264 which is your processor and you have a good processor which a lot of people if they're trying to just start off streaming they might not have a good processor this is going to be complicated so what i would recommend with bitrate is if you have an okay processor and your internet connection is okay leave it at 2500 to 3500 because at the end of the day you're not going to be able to output much if the processor is holding you back if you have a great processor and you have a great internet connection you could easily crank this up to 4500 5000 bitrate and it would look perfectly fine now if we switch the tone over to nvec new this is where things get a little bit interesting because like i said this is coming out of your graphics card and not your power supply this is coming out of your graphics card not your cpu so what this means is that it's going to require more bitrate to get the quality to be about the same as x264 so if you go 4000 bitrate on x264 you're gonna have to go like 6000 bitrate on nvec because it's gonna require more bitrate to get the same quality compared to x264 but it is definitely an easy thing to do and the best way to find out how much bitrate you have is simply by going to speedtest.net or google speed test and finding out what your upload speed so as you guys can see my download was around 127 and my upload is only around 10 to 12 which isn't that great but if i'm only using 5000 bitrate then it's perfectly fine that's basically what bitrate is keyframes you don't really have to worry about that most of the time it'll automatically just figure out the preference for you your quality preset if you guys are on x264 it's just going to be usage it's just going to be usage preset which is very important to keep in mind so the higher up you go on this chain the worse it will look but the easier it will be to perform on your processor so if you have a very old processor you might be able to stream at ultra fast but it's going to look pretty bad because your processor isn't doing any of the work really and it's just spitting out an image very fast is okay it doesn't look great it doesn't look bad the lower down you go if you get down to like medium it looks pretty good that's a clean stream right there and people are definitely going to watch that because it looks good and it just performs good overall but that's a little bit more taxing on your processor meaning that you might start to lag you might start to drop frames this all depends on what processor you have so if you have like an i5 anything before 8th gen it might lag pretty bad if you have a ryzen 1600 and up I can guarantee you you won't lag because I've had the 1600 and the 1600X, 1700, 1700X, none of them lag. So it does come down to what processor you have so keep that in mind when you're figuring out what you want to do. Now if you go back to hardware encoding which is NVEC, you can see that the preset here is max quality, quality, performance. A lot of the times if you're doing this with a graphics card that supports NVEC, you could easily just put max quality and go for it because it works really, really well. For the profile, I like to keep mine on high simply because this means what type of you know action is going on in the game. And a lot of the times I might be playing Apex, I might be playing a game that's just very high movement. So this is very beneficial because it knows that it has to work harder to keep up with all the frames that are constantly moving around. So that's something that I like to do. But if you guys play MOBA games like League of Legends, Dota, something like that, you guys could easily put this to main and be perfectly fine because the processor and graphics card wouldn't know the difference since the game isn't really something that's being moved around very quickly and cycle visual tuning i like to keep on just because it's something that came along with the new um nvidia patching for obs so that way the encoders could take you know performance from the computer so now it performs a lot better due to the rtx encoder and the 1660 1660 ti that came with it so all of those things they do take advantage and this is part of the nvec new compared to the nvec old which doesn't have anything like this and it just wouldn't perform as well so now moving over to the audio tab in the audio tab we have multiple mic devices that you can just leave there so for the most part you want to make sure that your first desktop audio device one is just your default so find whatever that is and click that and then the first microphone you want to make sure that it's whatever you're using so for me it would be the sound blaster k3 because that's the microphone i'm using that's the audio interface that it's connected to so that way you don't end up connecting your hd pro webcam c920 and then people end up hearing you from your webcam which would be annoying personally for me and i wouldn't want to stick around in that live stream for too long 
Now moving over to the video tab, this is very, very important because this is a quality that you're going to be outputting to. So the base canvas, whatever your monitor is, the base canvas is very important. So just leave that at whatever your monitor is. And now the output, this is where it really matters. A lot of the times people want to stream at 1920 by 1080 because they want to be the highest streaming quality streamer out there. But that's not how it works. Unfortunately, there is a tier system of who gets preference with the bandwidth that Twitch provides. So if you were to stream at 4K, just because you're streaming at 4K doesn't mean that your stream is going to go buttery smooth. Your stream is probably going to stutter because Twitch knows that if you're not even an affiliate, they're not even going to give you preference at all. So you're basically going to be in a highway all the way in the back in a Corvette. Think of it like that. You're in the freeway all the way in the back in a Corvette and you're moving at like two miles per hour. And that is simply due to the fact that you have the Corvette. So the freeway puts you all the way in the back. So it's not, you know, reasonable to stream at 4K if you're not a partner. Yeah, so it's just if you're not a partner, don't stream at 4K or in general, streaming at 4K requires more bandwidth because there's more pixelation and it would just require more bandwidth, which would be bad for your viewers, because if you give out too much bandwidth, that might make them buffer. So it's, it's you know, a give and take type of situation. What I would highly recommend is that you guys do 1280 by 720 at 60 FPS. This works beautifully. A lot of the times you won't even be able to tell the difference unless it's, you know, like PUBG or something. It's not going to be a noticeable difference for the most part. All you have to do is put the downscale filter at 32 samples and then you put the common FPS values at 60 and right there you just have the perfect combo and you're going to do perfectly fine. So right here we're on the hotkeys and I don't have any hotkeys and I don't really use any hotkeys simply due to the fact that a lot of the times I'll set hotkeys on the keys that I think I will never use and then I end up using them for a game thinking that I'm not using them and then I accidentally end up cut, like cutting out my stream, closing it, opening it, starting a stream, starting a recording when I didn't mean to, all these different things. So for me, that's personally a hassle. But if you guys have a lot of extra keys on your keyboard, I know some Logitech Razer keyboards have just a spare amount of macro keys and you guys can easily use those to make your streaming life a little bit easier it would be like having an elgato deck without even having to pay one so that's pretty cool and in the advanced this is also very important because this is if you guys are using x264 this is what you're telling your processor to prioritize so if you guys are using x264 or using your ryzen processor or something then you guys have to tell your ryzen processor how important the stream is you know in the utilization of it and a lot of the times you want to go above normal or high unless you're playing a MOBA you're just doing just chatting you're just watching videos stuff like that depending on what you're going to be streaming that day this is all very very important so a lot of the times if you're playing apex or something you want this to be high because when you're playing apex your fast paced movement goes all over the place and it's going to blur up the stream if you just have it on normal because your processor doesn't know that this game is taking up a lot of cpu power so you have have to put it higher so that way the processor is able to keep up with it but if you put it on normal it will look perfectly fine like i said for league dota any game that doesn't require too much movement osu stuff like that it'll look perfectly fine but high or above normal those are things for overwatch just in general games that are going to be fast paced csgo all those different things so you have to keep that in mind and when it comes down to video color format and all that stuff just leave this all on normal because the moment you mess with it this is where it gets really annoying and for the stream delay if you guys are pubg streamers you guys are any type of big streamer and you guys don't want your viewers to stream snipe you this is something that you guys can mess with really easily you can just add a delay to your stream which i think is really really cool and you can just do that which is really nice and easy to do game overlay it's just something that um, streamlabs has been adding one of its cool features scene selection this is something you can import so if you have your own things you can easily import them compared to just downloading a template from streamlabs which is also very easy to do your notifications same difference it's just something that streamlabs provides to make it easier for you to test things out compared to having to go out of your way and look for something which is really neat and of course the appearance this is basically how streamlabs is going to look for you which i think is cool just because you can select it between night and day the day one is a little bit too bright my face probably just blew up from that and it's just really nice that they allow you to customize so much of it without having to change everything it's just all easy one click solutions which is really really cool and one of the coolest things too is if you guys click on the barcode and show it if you guys download the streamlabs app you guys will be able to use your phone yeah your phone 
like a stream deck meaning you can start the stream you can mute the stream you can change scenes you can do a bunch of other things just through the app which i think is really really cool so it's like you don't even have to pay for an elgato uh deck which is just amazing you can do it all through the app which is just really, really sweet overall. Now switching over to the big boy program that I like to use, which is OBS Studio. I prefer OBS Studio a million times over Streamlabs, but that's just because that's me and I like being able to customize everything. And I'm also going to make a video on how to use OBS Studio perfectly fine because this is the one thing I don't like about Streamlabs. Keep this in mind, guys. Streamlabs is super easy to get off your feet. If you want to start streaming one day, you just I want to start streaming you download streamlabs don't download obs studio because you're going to get confused and it's probably going to make you think that streaming is the most complicated thing and it's not it really is not so i would 100 percent recommend you getting streamlabs just because it's so easy to use so user friendly and you can easily get templates for whatever you want notifications for whatever you want and then you're basically done you're a professional shroud streamer level at that point but the thing to keep in mind is with streamlabs since everything is a lot easier and it's in beta still a lot of things break really easily and you don't know how to fix it and most of the time you have to wait for an update to come out from their side to fix problems that you should be able to fix yourself or problems that shouldn't be there from the beginning so streamlabs yes it's easy to use yes it's easy to start off with but over time I would highly recommend you guys check out OBS studio for yourself because OBS studio has been around for a long time it rarely has problems and overall if you guys get really into streaming which you guys should all give a chance because streaming is really cool streaming gives you an opportunity to make new friends it gives you a chance to show off what you have when it comes to games and in general it just connects you with people that are just like you which I think is crazy and a lot of fun to do so at the end of this video all I want to say is thank you guys so much for sticking around and watching this entire video let me know if you guys have any questions whatsoever I'm always responding to comments because OBS is a program that I love using and if there are any people that are out there looking for help, I'm here to help because I'm, I'm just that type of person. I like helping everyone out when it comes to a program that I already know and I want to get everyone off their feet and streaming, recording, whatever they're going to be doing because this is just overall very, very important to me. So if you guys have any questions, leave them down below. Let me know any questions whatsoever. I'm being very, very specific about this because in my previous OBS videos, a lot of people always leave semi answered questions. They're very confused questions, but they don't really give me a question. It's like, how do I do? And then they just stop or something like that. I want you guys to give me very specific detailed problems that I could help you with because Streamlabs, like I said, is a pain in the ass to work with. And if I can help you guys in any way, I'm glad to do it. Make sure to check out my social medias a link down below. Check out the Discord link down below. And of course, if you guys have not heard, I'm in a group called the Tech Fam, and we are awesome YouTubers. And there is going to be coming content from all of us. This includes Christopher Yee, Toasty Bros, Scattervolt, a lot of other people that you guys should check out. And that will all be linked down below. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to join me in Area 51 coming September. And I will see you guys around. Peace, guys.